26. Those winds are set to pick up between 20 and 40 kilometers per hour from the southwest. Uh, you know what? Bradley Power doesn't seem too worried about it. He said we've rode in worse. So as of right now, no concerns about those winds that are going to change. And actually, heat warning in effect today. That's the main thing for people that are uh, that are coming down here. So, uh, yeah. Well, we That's the story there. We want to welcome anybody who may be uh, watching us on Facebook, of course, the CBC main page. Uh, check us out. Keep watching. We're going to be here right up until 9 o'clock this morning as we broadcast uh, live with the St. John's Morning Show on location at the Banks of Kitty Vitty. What do you say we have another song? Ladies, you've got something uh, for us. What are we going to hear? We're going to do uh, four strong winds right now. Not much wind today, though. Just, just one little, how about we do one little light wind? <laughs> All right, Jackie Sullivan and Carla Pilgrim, take it away. Four strong winds that blow lonely, seven seas that run high, all those things that don't change. Come what may, for the good times are all gone, and I'm bound for moving on. I look for you if I'm ever back this way. I think I'll go out to Alberta, where there's good there in the fall. Got some friends that I could go to working for. Still, I wish you'd change your mind if I'd ask you one more time. But we've been through that a hundred times or more. Four strong winds that blow lowly, seven seas that run high. All those things that don't change, come what may. For the good times are all gone, and I'm bound for moving on. I look for you if I'm ever back this way. If I get there before the snow flies And if things are going good You could meet me if I sent you down the fair But by then it would be winter Ain't too much for you to do And those four winds sure can blow strong winds that blow lonely, seven seas that run high, all those things that don't change, come what may, for the good times are all gone, and I'm bound for moving on, I look for you. Times are all gone, and I'm bound for moving on. I look for you if I am ever back this way. Amazing job. That is Carla Pilgrim, Jackie Sullivan. Right now it's 717. You are listening or watching to the St. John's Morning Show live down here at Kitty Vitty Lake. We had a couple of special guests here this morning. I know you guys are going to be busy. This is Kyle McKenna and Alicia McKenna, husband and wife. You guys run Hitch in the Kitchen by Blue. So what do you have here? 
Uh, this is our uh, hot chicken sandwich that we're going to be serving today. It's our most popular item on the food truck. You get two pieces of fried chicken in our garlic hot sauce with our homemade dill pickles, um, some mayo and lettuce on a bun. I can smell it from here. It smells pretty good. Uh, what does it taste like? It's hot and spicy. It's, it's Yeah, it's excellent. It's very, very good. So what's the plan for today? Uh, you guys are doing breakfast too? So we're serving up a breakfast sandwich um, starting at 8 o'clock and quantities are limited so come down and get them early and once we are out of breakfast sandwiches we'll be switching over to our lunch menu for the rest of the day. How do you even begin preparing for a day like the regatta? I mean when you're working out of a truck right because it's, it's all hard enough like when you're dealing with this kind of volume but how do you do it out of a truck? Um, out of the truck is, is a bit challenging but uh, this is our third year at it so we're, we're getting uh, used, to, used to the space restrictions. I guess you had a good trial run last night as well. You were open. Tell us what uh, was going on here last night. Uh, we were here last night preparing for this morning, and we decided to open. So we had a really busy night. We did some tacos. We had our hot chicken sandwich, and we also had a wrap. Uh, today our menu is a little bit different, so you got to make sure to come down and check it out. Well, guys, I guess we'll let you get into it, but I, I want somebody uh, to taste test this, and I do know we have somebody that's pretty eager. Uh, Jeremy Eaton, here comes Jeremy. Are you going to do this, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll get in there. All right. Yeah, squat it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He's got a white T-shirt on. Well, we should have brought some napkins, too. I know. Sorry. My mom's going to be very happy when she <laughs> sees this. Go for it. All right, he just went in there. He went for it. Oh, man, that was really good. Oh, yeah. It looks good. It looks really good. I was like... Can you ask them about their matching tattoos? Uh, okay. <laughs> What's up with that? Taco Bell. Oh my God! Okay, so you get a talk, a girl and a taco. What's up with that? Uh, for our first and wedding anniversary, we decided to get uh, some taco tattoos <laughs> to uh, go with our taco truck. Right on. You guys are the coolest. So, uh, uh, anybody wondering where they're going to find one of these? Have a look at your taco tattoos and get a piece of that action over there with the burgers where, where can they find you we are just up on the boathouse side we're just a couple uh stations down from the actual boathouse big white truck and it says hitch in the kitchen that's where you'll find us right on well happy regatta day guys good luck out there Thank awesome thanks much. for having us thanks. See, see you later guys that was uh, kyle and alicia mckenna they run hitch in the kitchen by blue the food oh, truck great. just over there and there they go you can probably get a look at their uh lady in a taco tattoos on the back of their legs there nice pick up there all right, Chrissy, thanks. So you're listening to us on the radio right now? I am. Okay, well, I should turn it how about you just come on the radio with us? <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. How would you like to win a prize from the CBC Morning Show? Oh, I'd love it. Okay, well, come on over. Let's, let's play Plinko. What's your name? Marilyn. Marilyn, and what brings you down to the regatta so bright and early? I was going out for my morning walk, and I usually walk uh, along Winter Avenue, so I thought I'll come over now to the lake and see what's going on. Awesome. And uh, do you listen to the morning show all the time? I do, oh, yes. Oh, good. Well, this is your lucky day. Okay, so who's got our who's got our Plinko? Who's got our Plinko chip? Johnny is here with it. Okay, thank you, Johnny. So, Marilyn, um, what you got to do, you got to come over here and you've just got to let it come. You've got to drop it in one of these slots and whatever hole it corresponds to when it goes down. Let's have a look. Uh, just sort of drop it in like, like, like that in between. And then you, let, you let go of it. All right. I'll let go All right. Of it. And let's see where it lands. What you're going to win is a... You want a pencil? A pencil. <laughs> okay. Can we, can we up the uh, ante on the pencil? Oh, of course. You got a pencil? All right, cool. We've got something for you. Well, Marilyn, uh, we really appreciate the fact that you're listening. What are you going to do now? Are you going to stick around for a while? I'm Maybe going to walk around uh, this the head of the lake a bit and then walk on my walk and go home. Yeah, you're not going to get anything to eat while you're uh, here? You know what? I forgot to bring money with me, so I can't. <laughs> well, you got a pair of sunglasses and a flashlight from the St. John's Morning Show. Marilyn, thanks for popping by. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That's uh, one of our listeners. Appreciate it. You have yourself a good day. And, Thank you. And uh, stay safe. There you go. That's Marilyn, who's been listening to the morning show this morning on her walk. And as a result of just wandering by, won a prize. Two prizes, actually. That's all you got to do. It's just as easy as that. Just exist near us. Yes, come by. Come we'll get over. you on. If you stop for one second, we're getting you on the radio. That's <laughs> happening. Guaranteed. Okay, Ariana has stopped. I'm going to take this opportunity to get her on the radio because she's been running around here this morning. So, Ariana, you get the very latest on the traffic and all the commuter information. What should people right. know? Well. As it is every single year, make sure that you try not to just drive down here. Metro bus, one of my most favorite regatta memories is taking the Metro bus, you know, like paying your dollar, yep. getting down. So you can uh, get a ride on the Metro bus. It is just 
you load and go. I think it's only a dollar for kids and adults. Uh, you can hop on one of those buses at Kent on Stavanger Drive, the Avalon Mall and the Village Mall. Get a ride straight down here. And even as I came down here this morning, the road closures are already in effect. So basically any street that surrounds Kittivity Lake this morning is closed. And also if you aren't going to the regatta this morning, I know we're all regatta all the time. Uh, there are some uh, splash pad closures, park closures that I just tweeted at Ariana Kelland on Twitter. And if you are watching us on Facebook Live or on YouTube, make sure you do get our comments into us because I'll read a couple of them out, some of your favorite regatta memories. And if you're coming down here, come check us out. Come play some Plinko. We got prizes. We got swag to give away. It's just like that. We got Plinko. We got the spinny wheel. And behind all that, we've got a pile of cool prizes. So we just kind of want to meet and greet everybody. Have a chat with you, you know, find out what your favorite regatta memory is. Um, on top of that, like you say, I, I'm so glad you brought up the fact that not everybody can make it down here because it's true. But one mm -hmm. of the great things that uh, we are doing this year is broadcasting on Facebook Live. You can see this on uh, YouTube as well and on CBC television this morning. So it's great to have you along with us. Uh, if you're just tuning in, the regatta is a go. Gorgeous day today. We're looking at mainly sunny skies, high of 28 degrees. Humidex going to be feeling more like 31 mid afternoon, and winds are favorable for all the racers. Top gusts from the southwest today around 20 kilometers per hour. Looks like they could pick up uh, from the southwest a little bit later today, between five and six, gusting up to about 40 kilometers per hour. We're going to throw to uh, Fred. Yeah, Fred, how about we just say a quick there. hi to the deputy mayor, Sheila O'Leary? How are you? I'm doing great. What a day. Yeah, did you order this? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll take Fred for it. Good job. <laughs> you, we, I've seen your Twitter feed, and you walk around, you walk a fair bit around uh, the Signal Hill, but Kitty Vitty, Kitty Vitty yeah, is your Ki choice today. Kitty Vitty, too. I do, I do both. I like, actually, I like to do both. If I can do the full run, then I'll do Signal Hill and come right around down to Kitty Vitty, right? So Why aren't you rowing? Ah, yeah, I, I'm better in the water than on the water. Very good. Yeah, you're, you're big swim, too. <laughs> That's right. We got our tickle swim for mental health coming up. Uh, when is it? August 18th. So Saturday, August 18th, leaving from Portugal Cove to uh, uh, St. Phillips to Belle Island. So, uh, yeah, today's all about the regatta, and I'll worry about the tickle swim. I'll come bother you about that one later on for sure. Good stuff. Thanks for dropping by. Appreciate it. Awesome. Enjoy the day. It's so beautiful. And, and good luck to all the racers. Yeah. That's right. Well, we're in the midst of the uh, the second race of the day with the ladies' first race coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, why don't we have some more music, Chrissy? Yeah, the girls are standing by. we got Carla Pilgrim, Jackie Sullivan. What are you going to play next? Blue Rodeo. Right on. All right. Live from Kitty Vitty Lake. Here they are. Just like the sun over the mountain tops, you know I'll always come again. You know I love to spend my mornings like sunlight dancing on your skin. I've never gone so wrong as for telling lies to you And what you see is what I am There is nothing I could hide from you You see me better than You can hold me now till I can gain control again. Safe 
some turns where I will spin. I only hope that you can hold me now till I can gain control again. you can hold me now till I can gain control again There you go. That's Carla Pilgrim and Jackie Sullivan performing live at our broadcast booth here at Lakeside. Ariana, you've got the official time from the male amateur race. Outer Cove, the winners, what was their time? 8.55, which appears to be the third fastest time in Regatta history. So, Wow, they broke still, the nine-minute mark. Yeah, so 8.55. They have reached 8.55 before, um, but again, excellent time. And this is not the championship race. So you can only expect them to go faster and push harder at tonight's uh, final race. And so the there you go, The conditions are awesome. We've got the ladies race coming up in about 12 minutes from now. Got a couple of special guests here with us this morning. Uh, what's your name? Johnny Hanlon. Denise Hanlon. Okay, you want to win a prize? Sure. All right, come on over. Let's play some. Are we Plinko or are we spinning the wheel? Spin the wheel, Johnny. Spin the wheel. All right, and you are going to win uh, some sunglasses. Now, you already got a pretty cool looking pair of shades on there, but uh, there you go, a pair of sunglasses. And one for his wife as well. There you go. All you had to do was drop by. Thanks for coming by. Enjoy right. your day at the lake. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There you go. So that's it. It's as easy as that. Pop by, spin the wheel. One ticket holding up the wheel, Chrissy. You know what? You don't got to buy a ticket to win something here and walk away winner. Everybody's a winner at the CBC booth. Drop on down and see us. You're listening to a live broadcast of the St. John's Morning Show here on CBC Radio 1. Also broadcasting live on Facebook right now. It's time for the news. It is 730. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep.
Good morning. You're listening to a special live broadcast of the 200th anniversary of the Royal St. John's Regatta live from Kitty Vitty Lake here this morning. I'm Chrissy Holmes here with Fred Hutton. Gorgeous day if you're just getting on the go. Beautiful sunny skies, not even a cloud in sight. A high of 28 degrees today. It's going to be feeling more like 20, uh, 31 rather with the humidity. Uh, I've got a special guest here who's been taking in a lot of the sights and sounds. Alex Suey, familiar name and face here in St. John's, photographer. Good morning, Alex. Uh, good morning, good morning, uh, Chrissy. So I saw you down around last night and you were taking some photographs. Did you, did you see any cool sights? What did you oh, see? Oh, yes, I saw the fireworks, which was a surprise to me. I didn't expect to see them because last night there were so many people. It almost like same as the day in Regatta when it's cooler weather gets. So I think thousands of people were here last night. Wonderful. What will you be looking for today? Today, looking at the champion races because today's weather is so good. And I watched the first race. It was fantastic. I mean, people were trying to do a good time, and I think they did a good job. You've seen a lot of happy faces out there? Oh, yeah. Kids are smiling. Dogs are here, except the ducks. <laughs> They're not liking that so much. Right. You're right. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing more of your pictures throughout the day today. Have a great regatta day. Okay, thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. That is Alex Suey here at Pond Side. We are live for the 200th anniversary of the Royal St. John's Regatta. Fred Hutton's over here with a couple of special guests standing by at the Plinko board and the spinny wheel. Who you got there? Yeah, well, they heard about it because I mean, we've been talking about people coming by, winning prizes. Turns out they're faithful St. John's Morning Show listeners. But when I scratched the surface, I got more of, a, more of a story here. So first of all, introduce yourselves. I'm Phyllis Rudin. Tom Smart. Now, uh, Mr. Smart, I'm going to start with you. You have a long-standing connection with the regatta. Take us back to your, the first time you rode. Well, I think it was the late 50s. I rode at a juvenile for Outer Cove, yes, in, in the late 50s. And uh, then I went on and rode in intermediate and, uh, and finished my rowing career in 1968 when I joined the fire department, and that was the end of it. Took on a different life after that. <laughs> It's physically demanding. Oh, it is very physical, and it was what amazes me as I was out watching the race here, all the, 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 the time and commitment the boys put in and the women put into it these days. Compared to when I was started back, we would wait for the boats to come on the pond, which would be probably uh, late May or early June, and that would be all the practice you would get in for the year. So, so it's totally different today. They start, they start in January getting ready for, for the next year, I think. Tell me about the significance of 913 on your hats. Well, my grandfather rode, Martin Boland rode in the 913 in 1901. With the Outer Cove? Outer Cove. The Outer Cove crew, yes. Yeah, and the record that st stood up for 80 years. Yeah. Now, Outer Cove posted a time this morning of uh, 8.55. Yeah, that was a good time. I think they were a little disappointed, maybe, that they didn't uh, get the record that they were hoping for. But I'm sure they'll have another crack at it this evening maybe the pond would be there was a little breeze out there this morning when they at the bottom of the pond yes so that may have made the difference so hopefully things will go a bit better this afternoon how much money have you got in your pocket oh, roughly oh, <laughs> you bring cash right not, a, not enough <laughs> okay so in the meantime uh, when you first came to your first regatta you had a different kind of currency in your pockets well, tell us about yeah, that yeah well it might it might well I, I was born in 44 and we joined confederation in 49 and i remember coming down here spending newfoundland coins and my well i don't know if it was my first maybe it was my, my second or there but i spent my newfoundland coins uh, yeah i don't know what i bought but that's the thing I, I'm, Probably a hot dog because hot dogs weren't pretty common around Outer Cove at the time. You know? <laughs> so what's what's on the menu for today for you? Well, I'm looking for something to eat now for breakfast. We're breakfast people. We listen to CBC every morning, usually having our breakfast. So uh, we're headed now to find something, coffee and 
whatever goodies we can find. Maybe Goods. we'll break tradition. Instead of the healthy eggs, I might settle for a donut or something. How about some fries? Okay, you want to win a quick prize before you go? How about, uh, how about just do the Plinko here and see what you can get? Morning show listeners deserve a morning show prize before they go. Just drop it in any one of these slots and we'll see where it goes. All right, how about a couple of pairs of sunglasses for these listeners, these faithful listeners? Uh, Caroline is going to come over. Johnny is going to hook you up with a set of sun, a couple of pairs of sunglasses. Thanks very much. You, Have a great sir. day. En enjoy your day at the lake. Okay, Chrissy, you got a special? You got anybody with you there now? You want to chat with? Well, I tell you what I'm looking at here now, Fred. Right on the pond, we've got uh, the senior women racing right now, and this was one of the races that we have been watching for. M5 are on the lake right now. Uh, it is 7.45, the time that we were looking to beat that they unofficially set. The, they, they broke the unofficial record last week with a time of 4.55. Just check this out. It's a team coming in right now. I know Arianna Kellen is very close to the tower getting the results for us, and she's going to race over here with that. But you're going to hear that gun any second. Listen for it. All right. Hopefully a record. People are cheering. <laughs> People are standing up and clapping. Any a lot second of anticipation now. here. And they chose steak number one. There it is. Obviously, it's the uh, the preferred steak today. Same for uh, the Outer Cove men's crew. We've got another guest here standing by. How are you today, Good Clarice? Good, Good. And you're with the uh, Canadian Red Cross? I am so, yes. So tell us a little bit about your role down here today. So we provide a service for the regatta every year. It's called uh, Lost and Found. So basically, if you have a loved one or when you bring your kids down that you uh, show them where our tent is or our emergency response vehicle and or any of our walkers around and we will actually try to reunite them with their families. So you've got a red vest. You're clear, it clearly states that you're with the Red Cross. Absolutely. So we're easily identifiable and uh, everybody knows the Red Cross. So we make sure that uh, we show, you know, all the kids when they come down where to, where to find somebody and then we can reunite them. So where is your main tent? Our, we have our emergency response vehicle is over uh, by the boathouse side of the top of the pond, and then our tent is over by the marquee. So we're, we're both, uh, you know, around, plus our walkers walk around all day long. And if they see anyone in distress, they'll go up, they'll go up to them, or if you have a problem, go to... Uh, absolutely. Anytime, and, you know, drop by our roof or drop by our tent and see. Uh, we also have some babies changing stations there as well. Some for moms want to change your babies, they can come on by as well. An easy, a more convenient place to do it. Absolutely, and out of, you know, in the shade, so it's a great opportunity. How many times have you been down to the regatta? Oh my gosh, I've been here my whole life, but for the Red Cross, we've been here over 30 years um, doing this service, so it's an opportunity for our volunteers, you know, to be out in the community as well. I mean, everybody knows us in the middle of a disaster where we are, so uh, to have the volunteers be able to utilize their skills and be down at the lake, beautiful days like this as well. So. It's gorgeous. Yeah, you probably will be heat dealing with some heat issues with for folks today. So yeah, we you know we want to talk about preparedness and make sure people keep hydrated as well. Uh, and you know our partners in St. John Ambulance will probably be around the lake as well to, to help those out. And the paramedics, of course, are here as well. Will you get a break at all for a snack or a game of chance? Oh, I will for sure. Everybody will. We we kind of build that into our day as well for our volunteers, so they can you know take off the vest for a little while and enjoy some of the day. Awesome. Thanks for your help down here today. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Okay, that's Clarice Legro with the, the uh, Canadian Red Cross. Of course, there to help. And if you see somebody in the red vest and you're in trouble, walk up to them and they'll help you out. Chrissy? Well, Fred, you heard that gun go off, which means that that race has ended. That was the senior female race. Ariana Kellen was pondside. What did you find out? Well, M5 took the race, which we knew, but the big question was, were they going to beat or make that unofficial record an official record it looks like they may have that 455 that's unofficial um, and there was another team I believe it was stake two that came in at 456 so still it appears as though it was stake two uh, so we're waiting for the official results but if it was exactly 455 that means that the M5 uh, women's team did break the record and we know last week when we were uh, you know Jeremy Eaton was covering this race he was down on the pond they were trying to go for a record at that time time and 455 was a magic number that they got so that's what they were trying to beat here today we're going to stand by for the results i know we're on pins and needles but uh while we got you here ariana there's a lot of things going on you're doing this you're doing facebook live and we also have uh, a dogs of the regatta thing going on can let's, you explain let's that to talk us? about what some people like myself really like coming to the regatta for which is to check out the dogs yes uh and we have 
a couple dogs here uh, to our left. <laughs> Very special guests. Okay. So right, what let's we're uh, yeah, what we're planning on doing today is to take some of these dogs and make them famous. So this is Tulip. This is Tulip, and this one is Lana. So Tulip and Lana are going to be dog models on the CBC <laughs> Newfoundland and Labrador Instagram page. So if you do see us out and about taking some photos of your dogs, don't be alarmed because we're trying to make them regatta famous. So uh, if you look on Instagram, look for the hashtag hashtag dogs of Instagram and we'll have a couple uh, galleries there because who doesn't like looking at dogs oh, and the there are so many nice dogs around here it's a dog heaven at the regatta this morning <laughs> and it's a good time to bring them down right now because where it's not quite as hot as it's going to be a bit later is that is that why you came down nice and early I know things are gonna get hot for you later too yes absolutely um, well they don't do very well in the heat so I thought get them out early the crowds aren't uh, too much right now mm -hmm. and uh, get them out for their morning walk around the lake so you're if you're listening on radio and you're like hmm, that voice sounds familiar that of course is Carolyn Stokes uh, with here and now and uh, Carolyn you've got a pretty long day so we're glad that you came down here what, what exactly are the plans for here and now for tonight oh well we're gonna be down here there's a 90 minute show uh, so we're gonna be here right through the championship race we're gonna have reporters all around the pond Anthony Germain is gonna be hosting the show I'm gonna be down here uh, doing weather so yeah it's gonna be uh, lots of fun we're gonna have lots of different you know we're gonna eat the pond and look at uh, all of the games of chance all the usual things and it's gonna be fun no kidding, eh? You get to be the weather hero today. Oh, I know. It's so great, right? I wish I could take the credit. <laughs> what a perfect day, though. We've had all of this wind lately. Every day it's been high winds, and then suddenly today it just dips right off, and it's perfect. It's magical. It really is, and I think so many people are going to be celebrating that here today, including the racers, <laughs> the regatta committee. I mean, everybody was on pins and needles waiting for this forecast, and uh, <clears throat> you delivered. Thank you. Oh, oh, I will take the credit, I suppose. <laughs> yes, the, the lake is like glass out there now, so it's just fantastic. It is amazing, and uh, I guess we'll let you take uh, Lana, and uh, who's this guy's name again? This is Tulip. Tulip. Yes, she's a rat terrier. She's something else. She's yes, some cute. Yes, she's a puppy. This one's a little bit older. <laughs> I'm going to give her a cuddle now in a minute. Fred is standing by. <laughs> Fred is standing by over with the girls. What's going on, Fred? Hey, well, we're just getting ready for another tune. I want to say hello and good morning once again. I'm over by the tent. Jackie Sullivan, Carla Pilgrim, thanks for coming by this morning and entertaining the, the folks who are walking by. So listen, congratulations are in order for you, Carla. Yeah. You're playing for two. I am, yep. yep. Now I months today, actually, I am. Did you hear the, the applause, as you said, yes. uh, as we announced that? <laughs> Well, like you know what? We couldn't have timed it better. And I think it's because they're cheering because there's uh, there's been a record set here this morning. Oh, really? Yeah, the ladies, the M5 crew just set a record nice. uh, around 8:55. We'll get the absolute official time cool. for you. But how about you play a song to celebrate the the record here this here morning go. for the M5 ladies crew? We can do that. Good, good, good for them. Okay, Carla Pilgrim, Jackie Sullivan, take it away. We're live on the St. John's Morning Show. Oh, that was the last thing on my mind. 
And as I lie in my bed every morning without you, without you, every song in my heart I supported without you, without you. And are you going away with no word of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? I could have loved you better, didn't mean to be unkind. You know that was the last thing on my mind. Yeah, you know that was the last thing on my mind. That was Carla Pilgrim. All right, there Jackie you go, Sullivan. Carla Pilgrim and uh, Jackie Sullivan. Thank you. Congratulations once again. Well, when are you due, by the way? Are you? October. Okay, that's Carla's having a baby. All right, Ariana, we do have an official time for the M5 crew with the official time of 4.56.10. Awesome. So it's a big news day already. We're not even at 8 o'clock yet. I know. We're breaking records all over the place. Okay, it's time to give away some more prizes. Chrissy? Yeah, we got Tiffany here. Tiffany Warren. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Chrissy. You want to play some Planko or what? Obviously. Okay, listen, here's the disc. You're playing for some prizes. What are you aiming for? We got the prizes stacked up. You know how this game works, right? I do, yeah. What are you going for? The mystery box. Okay, all right. You know what to do. Put the disc in. Let's see what you get. You win a CBC tote bag. They're good bags. They are, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get you one of those. Thanks so much for stopping by. Listen, Thank who's you. your who's your buddy here? This is my dog Harley. Is Harley uh, has Harley's photo been taken just yet? Uh, I think so, but she's very fast, so she's a little bit blurry. Harley looks like a puppy. How old? What's the reality? She's six and a half. <laughs> she's got that puppy spirit. She does. Oh, that's fantastic. So, what's your plan for the regatta today? Uh, get some breakfast and then come back, watch my coxswain row, and then row at two forty. Wow. Okay. So tell us about your team. Tell us about what, what you got planned. Um, our plan is not to tip the boat over and crash on anyone else and just like go out there and have fun. Who are you rowing with? With Body Quest. Amazing. So uh, what's the experience been like? Is this your first time rowing or? I actually spared seven years ago, but this is my first time actually in the regatta. So. You picked a good year for it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so what's the experience like been training all along? It's been very tough, but it's been a lot of fun. Like we have a good crew and like we're having a great time like just hanging out together and training together. Have you been one of those crews that have been doing that thing where you're you're strict, strict, strict on everything you put in your body or, or what what have the last couple of weeks been like in preparation? The last couple of weeks for me have been a little more strict. Um, you know, no beer, but that's okay. <laughs> How are you going to celebrate tonight either way? Uh, hanging out with my friends. We have a tailgate happening this afternoon in the parking lot, so it should be fun. That's a bit of a tradition too, isn't it? The tailgate that happens over here by the boathouse? Yeah, it is. Fantastic. Well, listen, best of luck. We'll be following. Where is Harley going to be when you're on the pond? She'll be at home having a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much. We got you. You got your prize there. That is fantastic. Good luck today. Thank you. All right. That is Tiffany Warren with little Harley. Out for a little walk this morning before she's headed out to uh, race in the Royal St. John's Regatta, the 200th anniversary. So many things going on here today. And, you know, if you're just tuning in or uh, watching perhaps on Facebook Live, the crowds are really starting to pick up right now. And it is getting hot with the feels like temperature closer to uh, mid 20s right now. So uh, we were speaking with a doctor, the same doctor uh, earlier about uh, basically how to prepare for coming down here. Uh, Fred, you know, one of the things that we learned from um, Dr. Butler was uh, after his experience at Salmon Fest a couple of years ago when the Eagles played, remember that? 35,000 mm -hmm. people, they ran out of water. This was the closest thing that we could find. Uh, so I called him yesterday and asked him, he said, people have to prepare to come down, prepare to be in a crowd, get your SPF 60, apply hourly. He was strict about it, and make sure you drink at least two to three liters of water today. All right, words of wisdom. All right, we've got somebody here who wants to come in with us now. She's she doesn't, she doesn't have any water, but she's double fisting with coffee. You got your Tims and you got your carry mug. What's your name? Gail Chalk. Gail, how would you like to win something? You said you came over. You wanted a red hat. I don't know if I can get your red hat, but okay. can you spin this wheel and see if you can win a prize, Gail? Okay, let's see. All right, and you are going to win. Oh, a pencil. Hang on a second. I'm going to nudge that for you. Oh, it's a fanny pack. <laughs> she wins a fanny pack. 
There you go. I helped you out a little bit. Uh, Teddy, hopefully Teddy didn't get that. I cheated a bit. What are you planning? What are you planning to do down here today? Visit the Anchor Men booth, diabetic booth. If you're down here this year, and then go home. Yeah. Well, you well you've got your coffee. Stay with me till it gets home. Will you get a bite to eat though? Probably. What do you like? Ah, uh, Ziggy's, Ziggy's fries. So here's a fanny pack for you, Gail. Thank you and thanks for listening. Thanks for dropping by. You're quite welcome. Okay. I hope you get lots of people here. Oh, it's not, it's not clipped. Enjoy your day. You too. That's Gail Chalk, a listener to the St. John's Morning Show. How about we have another uh, little bit of music? Check, check, check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This is program. 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 Do you hear me, Caroline? Do you hear me? Just, just not. Yeah, okay. All right. One two 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 Hobbsy 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 one two one two 
Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two, test, test, test for Hobbs, test for Hobbs, test for Hobbs, test for Hobbs. Morning. It's 8.05. You're listening to the St. John's Morning Show live from Kitty Bitty Lake this morning for the 200th anniversary of the regatta. If you're just waking up, of course, it's a go, Fred Hutton. I'm Chrissy Holmes. We've been having a time. Said already, the M5 ladies crew. Yes, and even the men's Outer Cove crew uh, had a great time. They didn't bust the record, but they certainly had a good time. Yeah, 455 was the magic number that they were looking to beat, and we saw them do it last week in yep. that unofficial race, and then they did it again because the conditions are perfect here this morning. They are indeed. Yeah, it's a great morning. Uh, we've been down here since about 5.30. The sun is out. I had to put my hat on to protect my poor little head. <laughs> now, you're lucky. You don't need that, but uh, if you're coming down here today, you're going to need a hat. The sun is hot. There's a little slight breeze, but not too much. Well, when, when we say slight, you can probably see it blowing around here now or maybe even hear it in the microphone, but we're talking a southwesterly, a gentle, like a lover's caress, Fred. It's about <laughs> 20 kilometers per hour topping out this morning. That's top speed, but a little bit later, they're going to be picking up from the southwest, so says Juliana from the Environment Canada Weather Office. So 20 gusts to 40 between 5 and 6 p.m. this evening. That's kind of magic hour for the championship races, too. So... Uh, apparently those winds are going to be sustained as we get into the evening. So that, that'll be one storyline we're watching here tonight. The wind is like a gentle caress. That's one way to describe the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the weather described a little more descriptively. you got to get colorful with before. this stuff, you see. All right. So we've our, our live broadcast, our remote this morning, includes uh, we've got lots of folks watching the races, but we've also decided that we wanted to bring in some musical entertainment, always a, a big part of the regatta. Jackie Sullivan is among uh, Jackie and Carla are playing for us this morning, but you're here with us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming Thank by you. again. Thanks so, for So what's going on in your musical career these days? Well, it's a big deal for me because I, um, I'm hoping to put out a new album. And so the last one that I recorded of my own solo project was in uh, 2002. So it's a big deal for me. Why the long wait? What have you been up to? Well, I've recorded on compilation CDs in between there. So I've done Newfoundland Women Sing and Our Songs and Homebrew stuff, but nothing solo. Um, so, you know, having kids and having a full-time job kind of makes life very busy. But uh, it's always been something I wanted to do. So I'm kind of uh, in the pre-production stages now and uh, just trying to write out, write some original music to, to put on there. So it's really exciting. So how do you juggle that with, with a family and with full-time work? And life gets in the way of your passion. It, it's hard. It's hard. But I, I have been at it a lot more lately. And uh, and as the kids get older, you get a little bit more freedom. You get out a little bit more, right? So, um, yeah, it's just something I've always wanted to do. So really excited that hopefully within the next year that's going to happen. And, uh, and I have some original material written. I've co-written with Carla and uh, with Daryl Power. And so I'm really excited to kind of highlight that on the album. What's different between 2002 and now in trying to put together an album? Well, Aside from your, your full-time job and family. I mean, you know, 16 years changes your perspective on things and certainly what you want to write about and what's important, you know. So I think this album will be a, a shift in focus in terms of topics and themes. And um, it'll probably be have a more folky slant than the last one did. And the last one did me very well. Um, and I totally loved it. Um, but, you know, 16 years does change things as we go, right? All right. Well, can you give us a sample of what we can expect? Absolutely. So this song that I'm going to do right now is an original tune that I wrote. It's called Old Dirt Roads, um, and it basically speaks to um, small rural communities in Newfoundland. And specifically, this was written uh, with my two kids and husband in mind. Um, they're currently on the Northern Peninsula right now, and uh, so they have a great love for that place. It's a little, small, remote community called Croke. They're there right now, so I'm going to sing this for them and for my mom up in Calvert who's listening. Um, this is a song called Old Dirt Roads. Okay, take it away, Jackie Sullivan. Thanks, Fred. Mm -hmm. 
some enjoy the city lights, but I prefer a pond by night and the smell of the salty summer air. The magic of this little place, sweet memories I still retrace of days when I was just a boy. Hours spent alongside of men in the woods and on the ocean. Then we toiled until the sun went down. The lessons learned I'll never forget, etched in my heart with no regrets. I'd give anything to have those days back now. Cause old dirt roads and boats and water It's in my veins just like my father And now I take my son and daughter there To the ponds and coves and fishing holes The hills I climbed, the paths I roamed Old dirt roads made me who I am Fondest days and nights I've known come from old dirt roads. And now it's time to pass them on, traditions of where I belong, to the little feet that follow in my steps. Cause it's sacred and it's history It'll always be a part of me I promise you I won't let them forget Cause old dirt roads and boats and water It's in my veins just like my father and Now I take my son and daughter there the ponds and coves and fishing holes, the hills I climb, the paths I roam, older roads made me who I am. The fondest days and nights I've known come from older roads, older roads, older roads. That was Jackie Sullivan. Right now it's 8-12. And you know what, uh, Ariana Kellen, I'm standing here with Ariana. I think that the fanny pack thing is officially taking off. It uh, is officially taking off. I feel like it's always been a thing and it's just coming back around now. You, you know? got a fanny pack, I got a fanny pack, you've got a fanny pack. Maureen uh, has a fanny pack. <laughs> well, to, to introduce yourself. Sheila mckinnon Drover is my sister Maureen. Sheila, what, uh, what made you wear that fanny pack down here today? <laughs> well, you and Fred were talking so much about it yesterday on the radio. I said, oh, I must get mine out. <laughs> they're handy, right? Yeah. Oh, they're great. You don't have anything in your hand, and then you don't have to worry about losing your purse or your money or anything. So. And actually, we That's made it. sure we had some of these uh, to give away. And Maureen, you won one. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> You're going to be suiting up here now in that today. You can put everything in there, right? Yes. It's it's fantastic. You won a prize. It was fantastic. And you know what? You, you actually didn't even need to buy a ticket. All you had to do was spin the wheel here. <laughs> I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> it was great. It was really great to talk with you guys. And i got to say, looking good. Uh, speaking of looking at things, I know Ariana's kept her eye on traffic. What should people know right now, Ariana? So the biggest thing that you should know if you're coming down here today is that you don't have to actually bring your car down, your truck down, and try to find a parking space because all of these streets around Kitty Vitty Lake, of course, are closed for the regatta. You can get a park and ride metro bus. You can go to the Avalon Mall the Village Mall or Kent on Stavanger Drive. Hop on, hop off, and uh, easy as that. And don't forget your fanny packs. Yeah, <laughs> they're coming in handy, I got to say. Right now, it is uh, 814. You're listening to the St. John's Morning Show. Ariana Kelland is in with us here today. I'm Chrissy Holmes, of course, along with Fred Hutton. And you know what? The Royal St. John's Regatta isn't the only institution that's actually celebrating a 200th this year. Back in 1818, ground was actually broken for the commissariat house. 
And to this day, that historic site is one of the rare living monuments to that early 19th century St. John's lifestyle. So we have a very extra special treat here this morning. Linda Keefe, the historic site supervisor from the Commissariat House, has brought along a living exhibition to our CBC regatta booth. A whole family, in fact, dressed in clothes that regatta goers would have worn back in the day. Good morning, Linda and friends. Good morning, Christy. So back 200 years ago, I mean, is, would this have been the fashion? Tell us about what we're seeing here. Uh, yes, Chrissy, absolutely. And uh, I want to make a note, too, that this is some of the finer fashions that would have been available uh, in Newfoundland at this time. Um, I mean, there was quite a bit of availability. Uh, this is a time period when you're getting uh, a population growth. And as a, as a result, you're getting a growing middle class and an upper class and more businesses. So you're starting to see more goods become available. So you see numerous uh, newspaper ads with the latest fashions. Uh, coming into the harbor uh, all the time. So availability was a thing here at that time? Yeah, it, it was growing. There was more growing availability that you could purchase uh, the latest fashions. Of course, still there was people making their own clothing as well. And these another thing that I want to note too, that these are all uh, done by hand. So you're pre-machinery. So everything is hand sewn uh, and it's all natural fiber. So you have your cottons, your linens and your wools. There's no synthetics in any of this. They are very elaborate outfits, um, also very heavy, I would imagine. Um, can I, I'm going to come over here to the players and uh, how do these clothes feel, guys? Seth, how does this feel? It feels weird. These things are, these short, like, things are really loose. Feels like they're going to fall down. <laughs> Is there a belt built in or how do they stay up? Oh, yeah, buttons, yeah. But what about the fabric? I mean, is it is it kind of heavier clothes than what you might normally wear? Yep. And how about you guys? I know, actually, I'm going to come on over here to uh, to the lady at the end, Elizabeth. How, so there's a lot of layers going on here. How does this clothing feel to wear on a hot day like this? Well, it actually feels quite nice, uh, nice and covered from the sun. Uh, the dress itself is very light. It's very simple style. Now, there is a petticoat underneath to give it a bit of more volume. Um, that's a little bit heavy, but it's quite comfortable. Yeah. What have you learned after wearing this, even just making the regatta walk down here, about what it would have been like to, to live and to come to this event 200 years ago? You definitely would have had to get up earlier to get ready. It's a lot more to getting ready, especially the hairstyle as well, which of course is covered by the hat. Um, but it's nice, it's simple, and the walk down was, was fine, yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing to say, isn't it, that so much more goes into getting ready. I mean, when you walk through the commissariat house, Linda, one of the things that you notice is that everyday things we take for granted, like, you know, firing up the stove or whatever, not so much the case 200 years ago. I mean, what, what would it have been like to live in St. John's 200 years ago? Yeah, that's right, Chrissy. Uh, so very different. Uh, the electricity, all our modern electronics that we take uh, for granted. Um, so again, I think at the commissariat house, the, the accommodations were quite comfortable because the position of the commissariat would have been upper class. So um, they would have had the best of what would have been available in St. John's in, in that time period for sure. You've got your hands on some stuff here as well. I mean, can, you, can you tell us what else you brought down to show us? So as a, a Elizabeth alluded to that there was uh, many layers often worn. Uh, so Elizabeth has a petticoat on underneath but then uh, what you would wear underneath a dress there would have been a shift and that would have been your first layer that you would have worn and then of course you feel that so okay, yeah it's, so it's cotton. kind of slight it's cotton, cotton. Okay. so the idea is that's absorbing all the oils and stuff and you're not uh, keeping your dress relatively fresh because no there was no deodorant back then there was no deodorant absolutely and then of course you have a corset and this one is is, is a, a shorter corset and uh, you can see that Elizabeth's dress is the empire style dress, which would have been the fashion for uh, this time period. So it comes, uh, it's the high waist, uh, it, it's right underneath the bus line. So this uh, corset would have fit very nice underneath. And of course, all the dresses were full length. Uh, you didn't show a lot of skin in those days for the ladies. And for a lady and a gentleman or kids, you wouldn't be outside without your bonnet. All right. And it is a beautiful bonnet, might it I add. It is, absolutely beautiful bonnet. So how long did it take the whole family to get ready to come down here this morning? Um, 
actually, I was pretty impressed. We did pretty good. I think we were probably a half hour or so dressing, and we, we had different people. I know I was uh, uh, helping Elizabeth getting her dress on on the back and zipping her up and, you know, uh, uh, had another co-worker that was helping with the kids. So it is a little tricky getting into the costumes and, and getting, there's a lot of little buttons and clips uh, that are hidden that you don't necessarily see. It was so wonderful to have all you guys come down here sort of as a living exhibit because there's a great synergy going on. We're talking about the 200th anniversary of the Royal St. John's Regatta and of course groundbreaking was happening at that exact same time for the Commissariat House and I understand you guys are going to be open if people want to take a walk through history. Yes, uh, Chrissy, so we're in uh, peak summer season now, so we're open seven days a week from 9.30 to 5, and that includes all our stat holidays, and including Brigada Day. You're so open today. We're open today, so if anybody is in the area, which a lot of people are, we have a lot of people park in, in, uh, around the commissary, drop in and say hello. Oh, you're going to be busy today. Oh, I think so too. That's, that's a good thing. Well, thanks so much for coming down and sharing this experience with us. It's great to have a living exhibition here this morning down uh, on the lake. That is Linda Keith. She is a site supervisor at Commissariat House, along with the family, the whole family dressed in period clothing. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to you, Fred. What's up? See, well, it's 820. You're listening to a live broadcast from Kitty Vitty Lake, the St. John's Morning Show. Uh, and uh, it's 21 degrees already, light winds, about 16 kilometers per hour from the west. Ariana Kelland is here. You've been watching the races. Already a record-setting day. Already a big day. So women's race, M5, you knew they were going to take the race. They have officially beaten the record, 456.10, beating the Oz record from 2003. Awesome. Okay, well, we'll... Uh, Check out the webpage, cbc.ca slash NL for more of that. Uh, right now, I want to check in with Richard McFarlane, who's come a fair distance in a short period of time to be here. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So I'm, what brings you here? Well, I, um, I'm a rowing historian of sorts, and uh, I love race history. Uh, and our club, Hanlon Boat Club, is named after the great scholar Edward Hanlon, who won 300 match single competitions, only lost six in a span of 10 years, 1870 to 1880 in Toronto. And really beat every sculler in North America and the world. In fact, they named it, uh, I renamed a town Toronto, New South Wales, Australia in honor of Ned Highland. So when did you decide to come down to this regatta? Well, just about, I really wanted to come here a, a year ago. I wanted to make plans, but my plans are so uncertain in the last month. I hadn't been well, but I thought yesterday morning, I, thought I had a sudden inspirational moment, and I said, I've got to be here because I'm a historian of rowing, and I can't miss the 200th Quiddy Vitty Lake Regatta. So you say Quiddy Vitty, some say uh, Quad Vida. Okay, that's sorry. Or Kitty Vitty, you know, it's right? all good. Every, the, the people pronounce it differently. Right. Uh, what do you make of it so far? It's a wonderful regatta. There are amazing races, and uh, I'm looking forward possibly to taking a spin tonight on a fixed seat rowing uh, engagement. I've always used a sliding seat, so that's, that's amazing. The other interesting aspect that people don't realize is the start becomes the finish, and it's a rowing race with a turn. So that's not usual in this sport, but uh, it really is exciting to do that. And you said in the pre-interview that you were amazed at how the decision is made and whether or not this goes ahead. That's true. It's an amazing tradition that uh, it depends on the weather. And if the weather isn't good, the town and the city just postpone the race till the next day and keep postponing it until conditions are favorable. That doesn't happen in other regattas you've no, taken part in? I've raced in, in virtual hurricane conditions. <laughs> the race goes on except if there's very high winds or lightning. Great. So. Well, listen, we're glad you made the trip down. Thank Thanks, you very Thanks much. for chatting. It's an honor to be here. That's Richard McFarland from Toronto. Decided yesterday to fly to St. John's for the 200th anniversary of the Royal St. John's Regatta. Chrissy? All right, Fred, we've been trying to pack as much food into our broadcast as possible because for a lot of people, that's what the regatta is all about today. Nasser's here from Curry Delight. Uh, what did you bring down, Nasser? Uh, I just wanted you guys to have a look at the uh, and try, uh, possibly taste as our uh, butter chicken with some chickpea curry and basmati rice. We got lots of more options in our booth, so if you want to check it out, we got lots of delicious options. Fantastic. Where are you guys located? Uh, we are near the beer stand. You can uh, easily uh, find our sign. It has the balloons on it. Oh. So you yeah, you're strategically positioned. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nasser, have a great day. Thanks yeah. so much for popping down. I yeah. think uh, we got a few taste testers around here that, that can help you out with that. Not a problem. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, this is for you guys. Okay. okay oh, cheers. Well, awesome stuff. Nasser, we'll... Uh, there, you go. there you go. Teddy's going to take that right off your hands. And you know what? Uh, so we got curry and we've also got some pierogies on the go. Hi there. What's your name? Yelena. Excellent. So tell us about what you're serving up today. Oh, today we are going to serve in different kind of pierogies, like 
pierogies with potato and cheese and beef and pork and chicken. Ooh. Pierogies, have you served pierogies down here before? Yes, this is our second year and last year it was absolutely fantastic for us. How did people respond? Oh, mostly just, oh, I can't believe you're doing it here in St. John's, or oh, it's delicious, something like that. And we're using the natural ingredients and it's always fresh and it's juicy and delicious. Well, where can, where can people find uh, your, the pierogies here on the lake today? So we are on the left side on the Kudu, Kudu Lake, very close to the place, the, you know, performance and artists there. So it's a good spot. Music lets me new found pierogi there. Music and pierogies, good combination. Thanks so much for coming out and tell, telling us about it. Thank you so much. All right, that's a quick food check there. So we're trying to give you a sense of what's available here on the pond. Fred, what else is going on? Well, the Bennetts are here, and there's no trouble spotting them. They're all dressed alike. Joe Bennett is here representing the clan. Tell me a little bit about what's going on here. You guys have on these special T-shirts. What's happening? Well, it's a great, this is a great family tradition for us, Fred. We've been uh, at the pond side now for well over 100 years, I think, between our fathers and our grandfathers. And uh, our generation has been here since I was four years old, and that's... That's almost a century ago, but anyway, but, you know, and that's, and my nieces and nephews are here, and our sisters-in-laws are here, and our grandnieces and nephews are here. So over the next couple of days, there'll be over 50 of us today at the head of the pond at 2 o'clock for a, a big family reunion at, uh, for, for Lakeside. And what is so special about the regatta, Joe, that gets you guys to come down here? And I'll ask you about your T-shirts in a second, but what is it, the, the connection? Uh, probably the, probably uh, the world's biggest garden party. I think it was probably, I think it was all about uh, getting the families together, and we're all sharing in a common thing. And we all, uh, my brothers and I used to row in the pond over the years. My father used to row. And, and so we, we got, and my nieces, some of my nieces and nephews also wrote. So it's become something for us that uh, we all gathered around this thing. And my brother, you know, Bernie, Jerry, and Brian, and, you know, they, they shared this with us as well. Yeah. And you've got some family traditions associated with this. Any you can tell us about? Remember, it's a family show. <laughs> well, well, yes, we are up the side of the river. We usually, you know, catch rabbits up there about every 45 minutes or so and we <laughs> gathered around there and we have a some uh, some Newfoundland stew and, okay. uh, and so it's, uh, <laughs> and some of us are stewed at the end of the day but anyway it comes along pretty good and and friends of ours who've been who've been looking for us at the head of the pond to do a sweep we, we bet on most every race that's on their friendly bets of course winner take all and then uh, and then family and friends follow us up to, to check the slips and see how the rabbits are doing. All right, okay. I think that's code for something else. Tell us about tell us about a special tree over here. Oh, there's a there's a tree over here that uh, three of my brothers have passed away, and uh, so we and in honor of our family, uh, somebody came in the in the middle of the night and happened to put a plaque up on top of one of the trees, so so they they wouldn't be seen. As there was a gathering, I think, of policemen around the bottom of the tree at the time, and there's a there's a plaque up in the tree and said a. a much of what's on our t-shirts is a great family tradition and uh, and that's this light plaque is put up in the tree over there for all of us to see when we come to the pond site you also visited the gravesite next door here to toast your mom and dad yes every year before we came to the regatta we used to go to our mom and dad's grave and and uh and have a a toast to them and that, that tradition has carried on and we did that uh, last night actually because there were so many of us so we had to go to a couple of grave sites because of my brothers and my parents and so we, then we had a gathering for the family after that. So it was, a, it was, you know, it was quite a special time. Kind of a bittersweet time, really. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, great memories. I mean, you know, we had more little fun in last town here than anywhere. It sounds, it sounds like Christmas in the summertime. Tell me about the significance of your T-shirt. Well, the T-shirt basically is uh, you know, designed by my niece, and uh, uh, and basically it's the founding, I guess, to my parents' uh, name is on the T-shirt, as well as my brothers and my sister. And basically, it's, it's sort of the family, and that we've all, and all of this group of 50, all came from this people who were named on this T-shirt. Really, is a special time. I get you guys. Now you got to talk to us as well. How, how special is this for you? Uh, this is a really big deal for us. Uh, we've been coming down here for years. The rule was, as long as we were out of diapers, we were allowed to come down to the regatta. <laughs> so here we are, head of the pond. Big, big deal for our family. And everybody gets to have a little bit of rabbit stew. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> As you call it. <laughs> All the way, yeah, yeah. Now, you look like uh, a little bit younger, so how, what's this mean to you to be part of this? I just think it's important to keep tradition. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Special yeah. for you? Yeah. <laughs> has, has there been any rabbit stew on the go yet? 
It's five o'clock somewhere. Well, yeah, I think there was. A, yeah, well, I think we set the slips there about a half hour ago, and uh, we, we should we should do all right now. I guess you know we're, we're looking forward to that. So. You know what? I think you've done your family proud here today. Yeah, Good for you. Much. Nice to see the traditions yeah, continue. Great, That's right? Joe Bennett with the yeah. Bennett family representing. If you see them in the yellow T-shirts, you'll know that it's the Bennett family. Oh, we've got somebody who wants to win a prize, Chrissy. Yeah, I've got Seth over here. He's got his big, hot, heavy period costume on. And we're going to see if we can get, put a prize in his hand because I think you're going to be leaving the regatta after this. All right, let her go, Seth. Let's see what you got. All right, the spinny wheel is coming to an end. And what are you hoping for? Car? All right, right now you get a flashlight. Congratulations.
Listening to a live remote broadcast of the St. John's Morning Show. We're coming to you from the uh, banks of Kitty Vitty Lake, historic Kitty Vitty Lake in uh, the east end of St. John's for the 200th anniversary of the Royal St. John's Regatta. The music you're hearing in the background, or you were, was from Jackie Sullivan and uh, Carla Pilgrim. They'll be joining us again with another tune in just a couple minutes. Ariana Kelland is, uh, while well, you're watching social media, we're Facebook Live and as well uh, this morning on everywhere, YouTube. But the big story of the morning, the race, is the uh, the. The record. races, too. Yeah, so we have a record, M5. The ladies' crew, of course, they broke the unofficial record. They were super excited about that, but now they've actually made regatta history. They beat out the Oz record from 2003. They rode today at 4.56.10. And right from the start, Fred, they were far and away ahead of everyone else. And uh, Smith Stockley at 5.12. The Cal Group, 5.13. Steers Insurance, 5.25. And Don Burke at 5.34. Also a big day for the Outer Cove men's crew. They didn't break a record per se, but they have the third fastest time in regatta history. Under nine minutes. Under nine minutes. Uh, they came in at 8.55.9. Uh, Smith Stockley Rowing Club, they came in at second at 9.33. Then Belfour, then NTV, and then Fine Stroke. So wow. a really exciting morning uh, for the races. Really interesting to see the Outer Cove crew, a lot of first responders, police officers, firefighters on that team. And when they got going, all the sirens up on the hills started wailing. So it's already off to a really uh, exciting start here this morning. Indeed it is. And I'm just looking at a drone flying overhead mm -hmm. on Kitty Vitty watching some of the races. In the meantime, we'll be keeping a close eye on the races throughout the day. That's Ariana Kellum. Thanks for that. We're going to check in with Chrissy Holmes, who's here with uh, Motor. Yes, well, I got Where's mutter here, but you know what? We got a couple of games going on here. Uh, somebody just cleaned up on a playing game of Plinko. Uh, what did you get? What's your name and what'd you get? Hi, I'm Dana Midas, and I want a hoodie. All right, congratulations. What'd you get? I'm Oaks. And what's your name? Brian. Right on. What do you guys got planned for today? 
I'm done. I came here and I won something, so I'm headed home. Walking away a winner, nice and early. Are you guys all family? You're all related? We are. We are. Yep. Excellent. Well, that that is actually. Oh, hang on now. Mystery box. The mystery box. Are you are you uh, you related I'm here? Dead, yeah. You're the dad. Okay. What's your name? Jeremy. Maybe. Jeremy. Okay. Jeremy. Let us. Let's go. Let's see what you're gonna. You're going for the mystery box here in Plinko. I think you're gonna give me a look. All right. Flashlight, oh, even yeah. better. Even better, flashlight. All right, Jeremy, you're a winner. Thanks so much for playing, guys. Thank you. Real family event shaping up here now. And uh, you know who else is here, Fred? You know who else I just run into down here? Is my mother, Tasha, over here, Tasha Ward. Good morning. Oh, Fred. my, could we have fun with this interview? So tell us about Chrissy's childhood. No, I'm just, just Chrissy the good was stuff. a good little girl. However, as a teenager, she was rather difficult. I ask, ask her about her black and blue hair. That's not what we're here talking about. Are you still <laughs> friends? Yes. Good. Okay. We're actually here to play a little game of show us what's in your fanny pack. Mom came down here with a fanny pack on, too. She got the memo, clearly. Uh, yeah. Are you going to play a game? Sure. All right. We'll open up your fanny pack after okay, that. Okay, what's over. in that fanny pack, though? <laughs> there seems to be a diversion <laughs> away from Well, it. let's see what's in your fanny <laughs> No, we're <laughs> All right, Mom, what are you going to play? Are you going to play, uh, you gonna play the wheel or are you going to play Plinko? I'll go Plinko. All right, well, let's go. Let's get the disc going. Now, you've been grinding me for a hat. I've been grinding you for a hat. We got no hats left, but you can play for something else. <laughs> All right, you ready? What are you going Mom for? Mom better That's win a good prize. <laughs> I, know. I know. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, a you toast. won a CBC tote bag. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Now that way I can put my new hat in there when I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're a good sport, Mutter. Uh, you got a roll of uh, loonies in there for me for later or what? All right, don't I forget your loonies. I got a roll of toonies for me now. All right, <laughs> even better, even better. All right, thanks so much, Mom. I'll, I'll try to track you down ahead. I'll talk to you later. All right, have thanks. fun. Oh, that's, that's nice. so sweet. That's nice. You want one too, Fred? Absolutely, I want a kiss. Do you know what I? Do you know what I give oh for a kiss for my mom? God. That'd be, oh my that'd be great. Hang on a second. Now I think I got something in my eye. Well, our next guest is uh, no stranger to folks who've watched the regatta over many years. Nice to see you again, Siobhan Duff. Nice to have you back. Thank you. You too, Fred. You come back every year? Every year. So what's happened for you so far this morning? Uh, well, it started out great, Eileen. <laughs> no, no, it's been a wonderful morning. I think the record is gone. I don't know for sure because we were on the water at the time, which would be an amazing race for uh, M5. I think the first women's race was a crazy barn burner. Uh, and then we just came out and narrowly... I'll say, I don't want to say narrowly lost, I'll be positive and say claim silver in the Masters race. So uh, that's, uh, that's where we stand so far. I think the record was beaten by about a second. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We haven't been back up to the apron yet. So now you've held that record for 15 years. Yeah. You live in the United States yeah. and practice medicine there, but you come back every year. Why? Because we love it. We love Newfoundland and we love the regatta and we love our families. Mm -hmm. And that's that. this reunion crew for us was, we just, you know, felt like, and, and I think I speak for my teammates, Sherry standing right beside me, uh, I ha we just really wanted to have a piece of this event, re recognizing the history of it. But for most of us, I think it represented a reason. We're all sort of getting up in years, and it just represents a reason to be able to come home for an extended period of time with family. And um, how long are you going to keep at this? You've just come off the keep off at the what? Keep, uh, keep at rowing. Oh, oh <laughs> coming home to Newfoundland as long as planes are in the air. Um, come, rowing till the last breath I take. I mean, we row in the states, and um, just part, I, you can row and get old. You know, you, can, you obviously don't row quite as fast as you used to, but it's a sport that you can you can enjoy into great longevity. So it's you know just from an orthopedic and mechanical standpoint. So we'll do. I swear to you, we'll I'll be rowing. I'll probably have an oar in my hand when I croak, and I'll die happy. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming by. Good luck today. Congratulations on your race today. Okay, take care. That's Siobhan Duff, of course, no stranger to uh, the regatta down here. Good luck today, ladies, in the, in the Masters. Uh, of course, they set the record with the Oz crew back in 2003. It was just broken uh, earlier this morning in the uh, ladies' race, the first race of the day. They rode a time of uh, just over 4.56, beating the 2003 record by about a second. Chrissy. Fred. If you're not racing today, one of your big challenges is going to be staying hydrated. I think that's fair to say, and especially so if you happen to be pregnant, like Carla Pilgrim. Carla, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> so uh, I know that this is one of the things, like we had to strategically think about where we were going to be. Porto potties yes. are right here. How Five are you doing? big steps away. It's perfect for me. How are you doing with the heat? Not bad, not bad. It's starting to get pretty, it's starting to get there now. 
I yeah. want to know a little bit more about you guys and your history with the regatta as well. Where are you from, and what are your memories of the regatta? I'm from Roddickton on the Northern Peninsula. So I moved to town in, what was it, 2001 or 2002, Two, I think yeah. it was. So I didn't know that the regatta even was a thing until I moved to town. So how do you remember your first regatta? Um, I don't remember very well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Spent most of the time in the beer tent. No yeah. said there. Yeah. Nope. Jackie, what about you? Where, where are you from and how do you remember the regatta? Well, I'm from Calvert up on the southern shore. And, and one of the younger memories that I have uh, was when Smith Stockley was on the go. And that wasn't yesterday. Um, and Kenneth Power, who's from Calvert, uh, rode with Smith Stockley. And I remember the Powers had a camper down there just past the boathouse. And it was a big deal for us to come to town, right? Because coming to town was a big deal. And so... Um, I remember they won a couple of years in a row, Smith Stockley did, right? And uh, actually, I saw one of the powers here this morning. So it was a big tradition for them, and they were kind enough to invite us, and we went, and it was a big deal. It was like a big garden party. What was the party like in the camper after they won? Well, I was very young, so I, I, I wasn't privy to that, I don't think. But I just I remember it feeling like a huge garden party, like there used to be years ago up the shore, right? So that was a big deal for me. It's wonderful to have you guys here. People are walking along enjoying the beautiful music. Do, you, do we have time for one more song? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What more. do you want to play? Yeah. Father didn't like me anyway. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do a song <laughs> called yeah. Her Father Didn't Like Me Anyway. All right. Thanks, Chrissy. No problem. Thank you. You're listening live to Carla Pilgrim and Jackie Sullivan. She wore still lies upon the bed. The book I gave her that she never read. She left without a single word to say. Her father didn't like me anyway. Wasn't happy with the way we live. I didn't feel like asking her to stay. Her father didn't like me anyway. Daddy never knew just what she'd seen in me. Daddy didn't like my hair Perhaps if we'd have talked He might have seen something in me Daddy didn't even Tell the truth, I didn't have the nerve. I know I only got what I deserve. And so now she's taking leave of me today. Her father didn't like me. Jackie Sullivan and uh, Carla Pilgrim. Thank you, ladies, for coming down this morning to perform live. I think you played five or six songs and got quite a crowd gathered here. Now we're gonna we're gonna spin some. Where are you from? BC. BC. Why are you here? Because I'm visiting my family. You're visiting your family, and your dad's from here, right? Yeah. Okay. Spin the wheel quick. We got some prizes to give away before the show ends. Oh my goodness! 
It's going to give you a CBC Morning Show tote or a reasonable facsimile. <laughs> I think we're out of I think we're out of totes, but you're getting something for sure. So you're down from BC. Your first yes. regatta? My first regatta, yes. Not first time here though. And what do you think of it so far? Hot. It's <laughs> huge, like unbelievable. Anything like this out in BC? What part of British Columbia? Uh, Northern BC. Uh, Calgary Stampede would be like the closest thing I could put it to. And you're her dad? Yeah, from more than from Mackenzie, BC. And this is your first regatta, obviously. Yeah. First time, first in here. time here. First time here. And your first time here. Well, welcome. Okay, we're going to get a couple more folks to come forward and spin the wheel, or are we going to have a chat? Do you want to spin the wheel? No, you can't win a prize. You're disqualified. Bye. <laughs> Good stuff, we'll good stuff. You guys want to spin the wheel, oh, try to win a prize? Where are you from? Uh, St. John's. Yeah, and uh, come down the regatta every year? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, what, are you for day for it. what are you looking forward to today? Uh, cash wheel. Yeah? Yeah, the cash wheel, yeah, and the 50-50. How much money have you got in your pocket, roughly? Uh, 200 bucks. Really? You're going to spend that much money, 200 bucks? Maybe, see how it goes. Try to double up? Maybe. Okay, well, here, look, this is free, so go ahead and spin uh, the wheel. Spin perfect. the wheel. All right, this guy's got 200 bucks in his pocket. He's going to the cash wheel. A pair of CBC sunglasses. All right, there you go. He's from St. John's. Anyone else want to spin the wheel? Come on up. Come on up. What's your name? Ed. Yes, Ed. <laughs> Ed Ford, Fred. How are you? All right, Ed Ford. We know you. All right, spin the wheel. What, what brings you down here besides uh, well, I, the I CBC mornings? To you, Fred. Listening to you all day, I said I had to come down and see you. All right, spin the wheel, sir. So Ed is going to win something here now, and he is going to win a fanny pack. All right, Ed. Uh, no, it's not silver like uh, Chrissy's. I think it's black. Okay, sure that's fine. Well, it, it, it'll match your, uh, uh, yeah, there you go. It'll match your ensemble. There, your belt. Congratulations. Chrissy? We've got so much going on here. Uh, I'm so glad you dropped down. Sandy Hickman is here as well, of course, St. John City Councilor. You're also up in the tower today as a yep. starter. Yes. So explain what that means. The starter is the uh, person who calls out, are you ready number one, are you ready number two, etc. So that's my job all day. Except uh, this year, with the 200th anniversary, we have celebrity starters all day. So about uh, a little over half our races. We have uh, all kinds of celebrities from music and politics. And uh, it's all great fun. And the couple we've had so far uh, have done a great job. Yeah, Chris Andrews. I know Mark Hiscock was That's in right. there today. Who else is coming up in the booth today? Terry Ryan is up next. Uh, the Premier's later on. Lieutenant Governor Judy Foote will do the Women's Championship race. So that's wonderful and a great honor for her and a great honor for us to have her do that. But a bunch of people, uh, some CBC celebrities too. Yes. Mark, Mark Rich is going to be there. Melissa Royal as well. So lots and lots of people. Wow. What's it like wrangling all these big stars? Any, oh, any problems? Man. They're wonderful people, each and every one of them. Uh, great to have them involved. Fantastic. I'm so glad you stopped down, Sandy. Hopefully you get a you get a drink of water or something. I imagine it's hot up there, is it? It's getting there. Yeah. Definitely. Great day. This is going to be one of the best regattas ever, no question. I think you called it right there. Thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you. That's Sandy Hickman, of course. He's a starter. He's going to be wrangling all the celebrity starters that are here and going to be up there in that tower for the 200th anniversary of the Royal St. John's Regatta. Right now it is 8.55. We still got the wheel going here this morning. Take a listen. CBC is going to be live down here, right beside the lake all day long. So drop on down like this gentleman is right now. Hi, sir. What's your name? Uh, Zach Snow. Zach, you ready? do you want to spin the wheel or you want to play Plinko? Um, doesn't matter to me. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, spin the wheel. All right, go for it. All right, Ed, come on in here. What brings you down today, Zach? Keep spinning it. Give it a good spin. There what brings go. you down? What, what are you most looking forward to today? Uh, pretty much it's tradition for me, but, uh, you know, just being around here, just, you know, uh, being around people, like eating the food down here and just meeting people like you. Right on. Well, your prize was take a selfie with the host. Um, why don't we give you another spin? Give you another spin. Yeah, sure. We'll do that anyway. Not a problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, go for a spin. There That's a good go. spin. There you go. That's oh, a familiar that, sound, that, hey? That's better in the morning. Are you a game player anyway? Um, kind of. Yeah. Right on. Okay, let's see what you got. All right, you got some CBC sunglasses. To me. <laughs> All right, Zach, you win. Thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure, Chrissy. All the best. It's nice to meet you. All right, it's great. Just meeting people down here on the, right on the lakeside. And Fred, you're over schmoozing Across the street. with some stuffies over there. I've crossed the street again. I've done that a couple of times in the last few years. But I'm here. Look, I'm, we're, uh, you're live on the St. John's Morning Show right now. What are you guys up to over here? We're taking some fundraise pillbox. Yeah, and what do you, what kind of prizes are you uh, 
got up for grabs. And we got barbecues. We had different kinds of stuff, you know, for the house wear. How long have you been doing this at the regatta? About 30 years. Less than he's after doing. Oh, really? So how, how long have you been over? Come on, have a chat. What's your name, sir? George Hamill. And how long have you been down at the regatta? Just be me 55th year, right? Your 55th year. What keeps you coming back? I, I don't know. Just in me blood, it was. Yeah, you just have a fun time. You're in the shade, at least. Yes, that's all great. That's one good thing for today, yeah. So you know this place. Did you pick this because it's in the shade? No, we just always had this land. We have this for a softball league, right? And you're raising money for what group or for yourself? Start of the sea. Start of the sea? Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Well, have a great day, guys. Turn on the show now at 6.30 tomorrow morning and have a look at this. Absolutely. You know, well, it's on live right now, actually. You're famous. <laughs> there you go. The boy's been here 55 years and uh, raising a little bit of money for their softball group. I'm coming back across the street again. I'm back. I only strayed away for a little while. What's going on over here, guys? Pulling Pull back you back, in. reeling you back in. Not just yet. The show's not finished just yet, Fred, but... Uh, There's fries over there. <laughs> just <laughs> saying. Yeah, you already had some big chicken. I had a man. It was deadly. <laughs> you know what? We're getting ready to pass the torch here because this is just the first leg of CBC's regatta stint. You guys are going to pick up the torch next. What's going on this mm -hmm. afternoon? Well, we've been doing this for the past couple of years. Dunk Jeremy a couple of times. Oh, no, no dunk tag this year. <laughs> no dunk tag this year, even though you came prepared. Sun's out, guns out. Uh, but I think we're going to play a couple games. So tune in to uh, CBCNL's Facebook page and YouTube page, and I think on our website, too, from noon to 1 o'clock. We're going to go around getting some shenanigans. Getting some, we'll get up to no good. We'll meet some people, play some games, spend some CBC money, and probably buy a lot of 50-50 <laughs> tickets. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be, we're, we're going to do the pool tabs. Pool tabs. Nutting. <laughs> Nutting. No, it'll be fun. You can't fun. drop them on the ground, thing. though. You've well, got no, to she's throwing them fun. in the garbage, Fred, straight into the recycling bin. Yes, that's right. Now, that's I just right. want to say before the show's over, because you only got a, a little bit of time, I did speak to the M5 girls after they, sorry, the M5 women after they broke the record, uh, 456.1, uh, yep. and I said, so how are you going to top this? And they said, well, we're going to beat it again tonight. Ooh. Right so on. We're going to have to keep their, our eyes on that race, which will be later on today, and we'll be covering that on here and now, so, uh, so tune into that. That's 6 to 7.30 tonight. There's an extra half hour so we can see those championship races. This means 30 seconds. We're almost done. How excited were they when they got off the pond? They literally were in tears. Uh, everybody was crying, hugs. It was a pretty emotional scene up there. I got lots of pictures. Again, it'll be on TV tonight. Great right stuff. On. Well, thanks Amazing for this. Amazing stuff. And, of course, we'll be covering uh, the Royal St. John's Regatta on cbc.ca slash NL, Facebook, and elsewhere throughout the day. We want to thank you for joining us. Have a great day. We'll chat tomorrow. Bye, guys.